Here's our next problem. We're given that uh, v sub x is negative 3, v sub y is positive 5, and the question is asking you to find the overall vector. Please pause the video and attempt that problem. Well, we can start by writing down the positive axes, as we always do. Now we're going to have to try to draw a picture. Well, we can start by drawing our x component. Now, the positive x direction is right, and the x component is negative, so it's pointing to the left. Now, where the x component leaves off, we start the y component. The y component begins where the x component leaves off, head to tail method. V sub y is positive 5, so it's pointing up. Now we need to try to draw the overall vector. Well, we know that we initially began over here and we ended up here as our final point. So the overall vector should point from the initial to the final point. in to show that this is the information we were given. We know, though, that it's not going to be enough just to find the magnitude of this overall vector. We're also going to have to find its direction, uh, because this arrow indicates we're referring to the overall vector as a whole, magnitude and direction. Well, a good way to indicate direction is to label one of the angles that the overall vector is forming, and then figure out that angle. So let's figure out this angle over here. not because I know this angle, but to show that I'm focusing on this angle. So that makes this the opposite side, and this the adjacent side. Now here's another problem where we know two of the legs. But we don't need trig functions to find the third leg. We can use the Pythagorean theorem. Hypotenuse squared equals leg squared plus leg squared. Our symbol for the length of the hypotenuse is v. One of the legs has a length of 5, and the other has a length of 3. We're just plugging in magnitudes here because we're dealing with lengths, so I'm not plugging in any, not plugging in any signs. <laughs> 5 squared plus 3 squared is 34. Now we have to use algebra to get rid of this square. Well, we'll do the opposite. The opposite of squaring is square rooting. Since I took the square root of the left-hand side, the golden rule of algebra says I have to also take the square root of the right-hand side. Positive square root, because we want a length. Well, if you start with v, and then you square it, and then you take its square root, you get back to v. That was the whole point of taking the square root, to remove the squaring. And our calculator says that the square root of 34 is 5.8. That's a length, so we don't need to specifically indicate its sign. 5.8. Now we need to find this angle because that is going to tell us the direction that we're pointing in. Well, we're going to use the information we were originally given, indicated by our asterisks. That was the opposite and the adjacent side. That indicates the use of the tangent. Toa. Tangent. Oh, we've got to show what angle we're taking the tangent of. Tangent of theta. Remember, you never just write this. You can't just write tangent equals. You have to say the tangent of some particular angle. You would never do that. Opposite over adjacent. I don't know what theta is. The opposite side has a length of 5, and the adjacent side has a length of 3. Now notice that I'm not plugging in the signs because I'm dealing with trig. Trigonometry is about lengths. All I'm plugging in is the magnitudes of the signs. So it would be pointless to plug in a negative 3 here. That's just going to lead to confusion. It's just going to lead to confusion if we try to plug in a negative 3 here.
Now I need to figure out what theta is by getting rid of the tangent term. Well, I have to do the opposite. The opposite of tangent is inverse tangent. So to get rid of this tangent term, I'm going to take the inverse tangent of the left-hand side. But then the golden rule of algebra says that I must also take the inverse tangent of the right-hand side. Well, if you start with theta, and then you take its tangent, and then you do the opposite and take the inverse tangent, you'll just get back to where you started, which was theta. That was the whole point of taking the inverse tangent, to remove this tangent term. And now you can find the inverse tangent of 5 thirds in one step on your calculator. Remember that, that if the calculator doesn't put this left parenthesis in, you need to put the left parenthesis in, because there's two parts to this tangent. Inverse tangent of 5 thirds is 59 degrees, approximately. Remember, don't take the tangent of 5 thirds, take the inverse tangent. 59 degrees. If you didn't figure out the angle, then you didn't really answer the problem. Uh, if you're asked for an overall vector, you need to find both its magnitude and its direction. Don't leave out the direction. And a good way to indicate direction is to label one of the angles that is formed by the vector and then work out how big that angle is. Uh, but again, this won't mean anything to your reader unless you've actually given them this picture as well, so they can see where theta is. If you don't want to draw the picture, you could say that we're forming an angle of 59 degrees above the negative x-axis. This 59 degrees is above this negative x-axis. Or you can just draw the picture. Now, when I originally drew this triangle, I first drew the x component, and then I drew the y component. What would have happened if I had drawn the y component first? Well, if I had drawn the y component first, it would have looked like this. And then I would draw the x component. And then I would get this right triangle. Then I would get a different right triangle, and then it would have been natural to focus on this angle. And if you had worked out this angle, you would have gotten that this angle was uh, 31 degrees. You can see this must be 31 degrees because 31 plus 59 is 90. And together, this is a right angle. So it's perfectly OK if you got that the angle is 31 degrees if you were working with this triangle. Either triangle is fine uh, as long as you make a clear picture. Um, so we could say that uh, the overall vector is forming an angle of 59 degrees with the negative x-axis. Oh, I should say 59 degrees above the negative x-axis. Or we could say it's forming an angle of 31 degrees to the left of the positive y-axis. Can you see how this angle is 31 degrees to the left of the positive y-axis? 